This podcast may contain spoilers. Hey guys, welcome to the Grizzly Goodreads podcast. I'm Skyla. And I'm Kylie. And I'm Sophia. And today we're going to be talking about the Cruel Prince series by Holly Black. So in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month, we wanted to highlight this series because it is one of the few fantasy series that actually has a POC main character, more specifically a Latinx main character. And so in honor of this um, Heritage Month, we wanted to just discuss this book. So this series is actually known as the Folk of the Air series, but to the fellow readers out there, we mostly call it the Cruel Prince series. It is fantasy and YA. The summary of it mostly is about a girl, mortal, named Jude, living in a world of fae and focuses around her struggle for power and respect among them since she is human. Now, speaking of characters, I want to know, who did you connect with the most? I think I relate to Jude a lot because she's like, I don't know, she was just very closed off, I guess, compared to the rest of her family. Like, Taryn was very open about her feelings and Jude was just very passionate about them. She's also my favorite character in the whole book series because she's just very, very passionate and she just always wants to better herself. In the end, that's what she wants to be is better. What about you, Skyla? Who is your favorite character? (laughs) I think I would have to agree mostly. Love Jude. Love that when she found what she wanted, she went for it. Mm -hmm. While I don't know if I would fully connect in that part, I would say... I'd probably connect more with the little brother (laughs) because if we're being honest, reading this series had me real confused. I didn't know what was going on, but (laughs) that's just me. What about you, Sophia? Um, You know, I think I have to agree with the Jude as like the favorite character and the one you connect with the most. I think that's what made the series so attractive to so many people is because of how even if you're not exactly like Jude, well, I hope Mm -hmm. you're not like going out and stabbing people and stuff (laughs) Um, but I feel like everyone can connect with a little bit of Jude because of that you know wanting to be better and wanting to be recognized and just Mm -hmm. striving for greatness okay now that we've stated who our most favorite characters are and who we related with the most I want to talk about least favorite I want to talk about Taryn because how is she so boring and then how does she become so backstabbing? Where did you learn this? two seconds. Like, we're chilling, we're chilling. Oop, next book. Don't do it. Don't do it. (laughs) I don't know. I mean, I think overall I had a little bit of a soft spot for Taryn. I just, like, sympathize with her or for her. I think overall my least favorite was Locke because I feel like he was the one that kind of corrupted her and started that whole mess between Jude and Taryn. Oh my gosh. And it just went downhill from there. I almost forgot about him. I'm not going to lie. It's, oh, spoiler. Think, she kills him and, and it goes into a hole. Like she's spir- like kind of like that's when she like kind of changes the most. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I think my favorite thing about that was she kept the body under her bed <laughs> oh for, for people who want to she... remember. And it being in a fey land, the life works differently here, okay? She said mushrooms and stuff started growing out from under her bed, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She was like, let's just hope no one checks it. I think we should talk about that more often because yeah. what who, the heck? What was his name? I Something with a J. I think Julian, it was like Julian. I think. Really? It was like it was doesn't matter irrelevant. Yeah, he did. He was, he was gone him. in like the first few. Wait, like the first book, right? I think yeah. so. Yeah, I think like three well, quarters of the way. I think that was my least favorite character. Yeah. Taryn was like kind of like weird and stuff at first. She was very closed off, mm-hmm. but she was also very oh, like open to like sharing her opinions. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. She was she wasn't my least favorite until like the second book. I mean, I would definitely agree with the lock thing, too. It low-key was his fault, but how big of an influence did he have on her to where someone can change that much? Mm-hmm. And that's why I mostly hate her. Well, I don't hate. I, I hate a lot of people in this book. <laughs> but I dislike her because how did you let someone change you that much against your own family? And I think yeah. that's, like, kind of what the author, Polly Black, intended was creating that just polar opposite contrast between... Jude and Taryn, Mm -hmm. with Taryn being more soft-spoken, reserved, more easily influenced, and Jude just being super headstrong and brave. And I think Jude was very jealous of her older sister, her half-sister. What was her Mm -hmm. name? 
Vivi. Yeah. That was her. Yeah. She was very je- jealous that she had, like, that she was half fae and, mm-hmm. you know, was, like, not as vulnerable as they were because they were mortals. Yeah. But I really liked her, too. <laughs> <laughs> I really liked the older sister a lot. I also agree with that. While I do agree that Vivi was awesome, she's a hopeless romantic, um, but good for her. <laughs> I also want to add another fact of why I don't like Taryn <laughs> while we're still here. And that is because how are you going to go and be all sweet and then backstabbing and then ask for help? Oh, yeah. <laughs> she really oh, was yeah. like, I'm pregnant. Okay. Well, you put my life on the line. Yeah. Did you not? Yeah. Anywho. Yeah. She was very bipolar in the entire book. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I also really love Cardin, but that's for other reasons. I don't know. <laughs> um, see, I didn't really like Locke from the beginning. Like, mm-hmm. he was supposed to be, like, the gentleman, quote, of the group, but he really was just not that great. Like, I didn't find, I didn't find myself, myself drawn to that character. Yeah, I get that. You, you know, know who we haven't talked about yet? Who? Nicasia. <gasps> okay, I don't want to talk about her. Because, <laughs> because one was... second, I'm like, oh, okay, the attitude. And the next second, I'm like, okay, misunderstood, you know, the average. Like, my mom's really mean, and she makes me do this and this and expects this from me. And then she, she you know, lives up to it for a minute. And then she goes back to being, like, decent. She just yeah. admits that, like, she's hurt, basically, that he left her and has just been trying to get back at him, which... I mean, I don't want to say it's understandable because she went to great lengths. Mm-hmm. I also but. feel like she was very jealous of Jude, mm-hmm. but Jude was jealous of her. So they were like both like jealous of each other, which made them not want to be friends. Also, like mortal and full fae was like a yeah. fae pr- um, princess. Princess, at that. princess, yeah, yeah. She had her whole kingdom. Yeah, yeah. I felt bad for Locke when like. They talked about his mother and, like, stuff like that. You see, I, see, I, that's one grievance I have with a lot of books is that I feel like a lot of times we'll have these horrible characters and they'll give them a sad backstory Mm -hmm. as if that would excuse it. But in the end, he made his own decisions with how he treated other people. I mean, that. Especially, like, Jude and Taryn. Yeah, that crazy game he had with them. I mean. That was just it, so messed up. I think it had a lot of impact on Jude. Like, whether yeah. like she showed it in the book or not. Like, that was her first relationship. Mm-hmm. Spoiler, but... First relationship. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, that affects everybody. No matter who it is or, like, how long they were together or what they did together. Like, that was her first real thing. Also, what... Can you refresh me on that, like, party that they had? They had a party. The one in Locke's mansion? Yeah. Okay, so I was actually just thinking, I'm like, what was my favorite scene in the book? Mm-hmm. Um, there was a lot of stuff going on in this book, <laughs> let me tell you. The whole series. Um, I would just like to state that I think the third book was my favorite. Mm-hmm. 100%. Clean or nothing. Okay, glad we agreed on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't remember much about the party. I remember there was a couch. They were in the kitchen. <laughs> There's a maze. Um, I do remember another party, though. Um, I think it was after she was exiled, maybe, or something. Before, yes. when they had her acting as the human fool, which is a tradition, apparently. <gasps> and remember, they had oh her dancing gosh. around in this ugly dress made of dirt and twigs. Yeah. And everything else. So, in the fae world, the food can be different, and the drinks can be different, and the dance, or, like, the music is, like... A drug to them. Yeah, it has so effects, like all sorts of effects. Once they eat these foods or drink the wine or they start dancing, they don't stop basically until they like die. So it's like, it's it's interesting yeah. to say the I least. Mean, if people were out to get Jude. Like she they never got a like, break. No. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the very um, enjoyable elephant in the room. <laughs> Um, Cardin, yes. yes, thoughts, thoughts. The main love interest of mm-hmm. the book. Um, I feel like they weren't really that much of en- enemies, like, at the beginning, you know? Like, they were, and, like, he watched his friends, like, torture her, basically. But he never really, like, did he ever, like, he tortured her, but it wasn't as much as they did. Like, especially Nicasia and... Mm-hmm. 
whatever, Julian or something like that. I can't even remember his name, but... I'm not a fan of him as in the love interest one. He's not one of the book boys that I, you know, I'm like, dang. (laughs) Um, I don't hate him, though. He is a drunken fool with a very interesting personality. (laughs) He is very drunk. Um, all the time. His family was dying and he was drunk taking a nap under a table. Um, for those of you who are reading the first book. (laughs) Spoiler. Um, I don't really care for him, but there are things he does that I find amusing and, you know, don't hate entirely. So, for those of you who know, Miss Holly Black is well known for her Spiderwick series, which I have not personally read. But the fact that I recognize that title means she's obviously very recognized. Um, Sophia said she remembers her and remembered her co-writing on other series, right? Yeah, I she made up a good chunk of my, or the literary portion of my childhood. She's also creating another book series mm-hmm. that's kind of based off of the Cool Prince, kind of in the same like realm. Yeah. Like, in the same genre, basically. Almost like the Grishaverse series. Yes. You know how it's different books and different peoples, but, you know, they're all in the same universe and world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is actually funny. I wonder if she got the idea from Miss Leah Bardugo, considering she helped her get ideas and finish up this book. What's so interesting to me is that the reason she writes these fairy books is because she likes the background idea of fairies she said she likes how instead of them being portrayed as tinkerbell and all these lolly giddy (laughs) fairies happy yeah they're dark cultured fairies who have dark things going on and like they have their own dark culture and they basically take humans and control or mortals and control them into like and they stay very separate away from the mortal realm yeah And, like, referencing back to what you said earlier about her pulling inspiration from other authors, I definitely see that. Um, I know, like, the Seelie and Unseelie courts that Cassandra Clare, um, who wrote The Mortal Instruments and all those spinoffs, talks a lot about that, especially in her um, Dark Artifacts series. Um, And then she, Holly Black, obviously has that in her books as well. And then, like you said, with the spinoff and... Lee Bardugo also doing that. So I think there's a lot of similarities between her and most fantasy authors. I mean, they all have a lot of stuff in common. Yeah. Another character that we should talk about is Matic, which is the stepdad, question mark? He's the stepdad of Jude and Taryn, but he is the biological father of Vivi and the young boy who Oak. I do. Oak? Oak! Yes! Oak! <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, Oak. Glad we covered that. <laughs> I'm going to talk about why he's green. He's, he's green. He's like bright green. That's how they descri- <laughs> that's how they describe him in the book, right? Like mm-hmm. pointy ears, pointy notes. He's got like yellow hair or something. Can he's talk- green. Can we talk about how he kills Jude and Taryn's biological parents? Yeah, that was pretty messed up. And um Viv's biological mother in yeah. the beginning yeah. of the book. Mm-hmm. Literally the first, first chapter, <laughs> like second page, I think. It's yeah. It's the first page I think is talking about how they're, like, in the yard playing on bikes. And I don't know if it was just me who was a little confused on that part. We're talking about, like, them being on a playground. Uh-huh. And then you go to the Fey world, and there's, like, swamps and stuff out of nowhere. I think that threw me off a little bit. Yeah. But what really threw me off is he just walked in and came in swinging. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and that was, was just fun. like, come live with me. And, like... Well, and he thought he was being a savior in doing so. He was like, I'm getting my, like what I deserve. You took my kid. But then he goes and he's like, well, I murdered your parents, so I guess I might as well take care of you, but also thinks he's being the good guy about Mm -hmm. it. Like, you could have just not murdered my parents. Yeah, Yeah. and it's almost like what you see in real life with cultural differences, religious differences. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't see that as a bad thing, even though us as readers, we're like, oh my god, he just killed her parents. Yeah, I think it has to do with morality, like how they both, like, how fairies and Immortals have very different ideas of what's good and bad. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Because it's like they see the mortals almost not as human. So in their yeah. eyes, you know, making Jude eat that 
wonky fruit and yeah. forcing oh, like her apple? to dance yeah. and fix it. Yeah, that's not like bad to them because they don't see mortals. They think it's funny. Yeah, they don't see mortals being on that same level as themselves. They basically think that they don't feel anything. Yeah. <laughs> well, I bet they're really ignorant to it, you know? Mm-hmm. She, um, like, Baleskin, Cardin's brother, you know, he's, like, trying to recruit her and all that, and he's like, eat these poisonous foods, like, every day, and you'll be worthy to join. And I just, I bet they're so oh, yeah. ignorant to, like, the fact that she could literally die, like, tripping over a rock just because yeah. that's, you know, they're on a different level, and they just don't consider that. And another thing with the Fae is that they can't lie, basically. They can twist and manipulate their words into kind of forming a lie, but they can't truly lie. Like, they can't say, oh, I ate apples for dinner when they didn't eat apples for dinner. You know what I mean? Yeah. What I've also realized with that is that is a common thing to be written and said about Fae in most of these fantasy books. While it might not always be true... Um, they say they can't lie, they twist their words. They also say iron hurts them, which we mm-hmm. see in this book series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And unlike other books, some of them are like, iron hurts them. No, it doesn't. This one, it very much does. Yes. <laughs> it very much does. And the lying, too. Like, just yeah. real connections to other fey books. And I think on a deeper level, that's what the authors are intending, is to give these almost perfect beings a weak point so that the mortals or people that we're supposed to root for have the upper hand in the end almost in like an underdog way and so that just serves as a means of making the humans the heroes in the end yeah be a little more powerful yeah Mm -hmm. to end off this episode of grizzly goodreads what do you hope holly black writes about in her next book I personally hope it is going to be about maybe their children or the fact that mortals don't age in that land. What happens to Jude? Her age slows, but what's going to happen? That's what I want to see. Maybe like she, maybe she gets turned into a fae or something. I think they mention in the book that um, while she's in that world, she doesn't age. Oh, yeah. Remember they said her aging slows because they had that old priest. Who was like the king's right hand, you know, mm-hmm. and he was like 150. Yeah. <laughs> so what's gonna happen to her? How's that gonna happen? Yeah, it's a good question. That's what I hope to see. I hope she does a different trope, not an enemies to lovers, but like a, I don't know, like just a different trope. Mm-hmm. What about you? I think me personally, I want to see a little more girl power in her yeah. next book. Like I, I mean, I think in this book, one thing that was really lacking was that like female bond and just like you know because there was a lot of backstabbing so i want to see a little more like bonding maybe maybe a different sexuality i was saying the same thing (laughs) yeah um because i do remember the most close female relationship we saw was between ghost and jude and even then we didn't see much of that the rest were like yeah i live with her the rest is well she helps me sometimes i i do want to see that as well I agree. And if you know they happen to be lovers, that wouldn't hurt, would it? (laughs) Thank you for tuning in to this episode on Hispanic Heritage Month. This is Grizzly Goodreads signing off.